Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about dropping old Python versions. Uh, I'm going to walk you through my advice for what to do with the version, uh, as well as how you go about dropping the versions, as well as some other fun tools that you can use along the way to hopefully make the pro uh, process a little bit easier. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for this, I'm going to... Let's just pick some random project of mine. Uh, get... Mm, we'll do Cove Defaults. Yeah, I think I showed this recently on stream. Uh, Cove Defaults is a project which gives good defaults for coverage. It's not important for this though. Uh, we're here to talk about how I go about dropping versions. So the absolute most important part about dropping versions in a Python library is to properly set the Python requires setting. And if you're working with setup.cfg, oops, it'll be right here. Uh, if you're working with setup.py, it'll be uh, an attribute in setup.py for you with you know, poetry or flit or whatever. Uh, those will have their way of specifying this as well. Um, but for instance, for setup.cfg, it is specified here. Uh, and if you don't have one, this is a good time to introduce it because it is uh, the way that Python distributions communicate to pip, uh, the package manager. <laughs> it is the way that the uh, tools communicate to the package manager uh, what versions they support. And so the package manager can avoid installing them on incompatible versions. Uh, now note this is kind of new. I mean, kind of new. Uh, pip 901, I believe, was the first version that supported that. And that's been, when was that released? Uh, IPI, P, oh, I was also looking at CubDevelts here. Interesting. Um, pip, when was version nine released? A long time ago, so you can you can pretty much depend on this being available now. Uh, nine was in 2016, so five five years ago. Uh, anyway, so Python requires the first step is to set this Python requires. Uh, I'm going to be dropping Python 3.6 for this just to demo this today. So we're going to say that we support 3.7 and above. Uh, so the next thing that I usually like to do is grep around my repository for things that look like 3.6, such as this here. Um, three dot star six is a good enough thing to look for. And it looks like we have quite a few things to look at here. Uh, this is actually test data, so we can mostly ignore this, uh, but talks.ini, Azure Pipeline, setup.cfg, I should probably handle those. Um, talks. Um, yeah, so that's basically no longer testing against the other version. Uh, and no longer testing against it in CI. Of course, if you're working with GitHub Actions, you're gonna have something slightly different than this. Um, and you may also take this time to add new versions as well. Might be a good idea. I don't know, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> uh, but you know, adding and removing versions there. Uh, the other thing that I also look for that's often missed is looking for things that reference 3.7 uh, or the next version that you're going to support. Looks like my grep is a little bit greedy, but that's fine. Um, it doesn't look like I actually do anything specific to 3.7 in this project. Uh, but one thing that you might look for is like, you know, if sys.version of vote goals, etc. cetera, uh, you might want to clean this up. But uh, you can also use tools that will do this for you automatically. And I have created a few of these tools that can help you out with this. Uh, one of them is the import reorder. Uh, this actually doesn't have anything. Actually, maybe it does have some special stuff for 3.7. I don't think it does, but uh, it has arguments that allow you to set a target version. Uh, I happen to know this one does not have anything about 3.6, so we'll just leave that one alone. And we'll set pi upgrade to 3.7. And if we add everything and run all those, see if it makes any changes. I don't think there's anything in this project that's 3.6 specific. Yeah, it looks like it looks like there's nothing pi upgrade found to upgrade here, but you can imagine there are some things that it might do. Let's see what pi 3.7 would do for us. Oops. I 3.7. Uh, looks like there's a subprocess.run thing, another subprocess thing. Uh, if you used the generators.future import, it would get removed. Um, yeah, so here's some, here's what I was talking about with specialized version blocks. So you can see that it um, it'll also do the minor version blocks. Uh, but there isn't anything else super interesting there. <clears throat> So that's how you would uh, get all of these in place. Another cool thing, though, that you would probably do while upgrading the versions is take advantage of new language features. 
And the one that uh, I'm going to be using in every single one of my projects is the new future annotations import um, from, well, let's type it in here. <laughs> and I'm actually going to use my import sorter to add this to all of my files. So we're going to do add import from future import annotations, and that is going to add this import to all the files. Now, I, I said earlier that PyUpgrade doesn't actually have any special behaviors, but we're about to see one special behavior here in that when future annotations is specified, it will uh, automatically upgrade my annotations to be the 3.9 or 3.10 compatible ones uh, because the interpreter doesn't care when you have set this, and MyPy already has support for them when you have this uh, special import. So if we do this again, and I'm actually going to run this a few times because it's going to take at least once to... Uh, and uh, settle in a deterministic way. Okay, yeah, you can see we didn't do any updates here, um, but this left behind these imports, so we no longer need dict, list, and tuple because uh, PyUpgrade has automatically fixed them for us, which is pretty cool. And my import sorter has added, helpfully added these for us, so we didn't, didn't need to do that manually. Um, but that's a few tools. Uh, one other thing that you'll look for is backported and forward ported packages. Uh, this one does not have any dependencies uh, besides coverage, but uh, for instance, recommit has a dependence on import lib resources, which became part of the standard library in Python 3.7, and so I would be able to just drop this dependency and only use the standard library version <laughs> with a little asterisk because import lib resources has... Uh, some annoying breaking changes in the most recent version, but we'll get to those when we get to those, I guess. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that's kind of the code changes that I would do here. The last part is talking about the version bump, and there was there was a lot of discussion about this on uh, Twitter recently, which was kind of why I decided to make this video in the first place. And here's my thought <laughs> on this. So the, the debate was between whether it's a breaking change or a bug fix change, and I actually think neither of those properly capture this, and the reason for that is, since we are setting Python requires here, it actually doesn't break any of our consumers. Uh, if you're on Python 3.6, it won't even try and install this new version, so it doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't break them. They are still able to use the latest supported version for their, um, for their language version. And so, uh, it doesn't really fall into the breaking change for me, and it's not really a bug fix, it's not really a patch fix. So what I tend to do is bump the minor version when I'm um, dropping Python versions like this. So I would go from 2.1.0 to 2.2.0 here. And, uh, you know, I following semantic version. Of course, if you're doing calendar versioning, then you do you. Do you. <laughs> um, I think I did a, ver a video on semantic versioning, so I will link that in the description. Uh, but yeah, that's what I, what I tend to pick here is to just upgrade the minor version. But anyway, that's kind of the approach that I take. You know, bump, bump the bump the Python requires, remove any lingering version references to the previous versions, uh, and then leverage tools to automatically get nicer things uh, for me. But anyway, hopefully you found this useful, and if you have any other things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.